is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, I'm going. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, coming to you a quick video. We're going to talk about the Houston Rockets picking up Luke Rashard about Mute, a guy that has previously played for the Houston Rockets before and has been a decent fit. He just was beat up and toe up a lot. Um, the season that he did decide to play with them, and they thought he can be they, they thought he can be a secret weapon. They thought he could be very useful, a guy that can play and defend the two, the three, and the four positions. And that's interesting because that's the type of guy you want. I think he is a little bit better than Dabu Cephalosha, who chose to opt out. So I don't think they're taking that much of a loss from placing him with Bob Mute. And like I said before, this is a team that has a lot of wings and, and guards already. And their primary best players are guards, which is Russell Westbrook and James Harden, who are two MVPs and two guys that has averaged over 30 points per game as a as an average before. So they're not really starving and thirsting for offense. They also did make the Robert Covington trade to move out Capella to go, go small with P.J. Tucker at the five, but also space out the floor so that way Russell Westbrook can do his damage on the inside, get into the realm being able to stop and pop and pull up for that jumper. It also allowed James Harden to play one-on-one -on -one just because you can't really help off nobody because Russ is just such an excellent driver. Then you have Robert Covington who can knock down threes. You have Eric Gordon who can knock down threes. And Austin Rivers can knock down threes. DeMar Carroll can walk, knock down threes. Luke Bamute has shown that he can be a capable three-point shooter. Also, Plus, you have even P.J. Tucker, who has become one of the best three-point corner specialists. You still do have Daniel House Jr. People forget that they also picked up Jeff Green, who can guard twos, threes, and fours at his 6'8 size. And it is very interesting to see how this team is going to work. They, they have a, a high ceiling offensively, basically one of the most unguardable teams in the entire NBA just because they have so much shooting and they have two guys that can break down defense, defenses anytime they want to and cause a lot of chaos and a lot of friction one-on-one. -on -one. It's tough to double team or trap either one of them just because the floor is so spaced out and they have such deadly shooters that you cannot really make the wrong rotation or the wrong mistake and they will hit you with either a free throw, a layup, or a corner three, or a three in general. And even if that doesn't work, they always just give the ball to James Harden, let him dance and embarrass um, his opponents, and he can knock down shots too, even off the ball, even on the ball, as we know, especially with the step back three and the floater and the layup ability. And his free throw shooting is great. And Russ has declined, but he is a capable free throw shooter too. But I do like to pick up for Bob Mute just because if you're going to lose Cephalosha, you want somebody that can step in and give you what he can. And I do believe that Luke Bamute may not play a lot of minutes. He might not play over 20 minutes, but he still is a guy that you'd rather have on your roster than not just because you do know what he brings to the table. You do know that he can fit in this system, and you do know at worst he can defend. And like I said, this is an, a team that's starving for offensive players as they have a plethora of wings and guards on this team that if they need to take Bob Mute off the court, they can always insert another guy that can do something similar. And even if they do a sustain an injury, Bob Mute is capable of playing minutes in the playoffs and being a productive player at worst, which is still good because that's the way you want your roster to be built. And they have a lot of guys that they don't need desperately need wing help, but it is good to replace that fellowship with a guy that you know can get the job done. Not only that, um, I, I personally feel like I'm interested in the Rockets because a lot of people don't see the Rockets as a championship contender. A lot of them don't really see the Rockets as a team that can win it all. 
in the NBA this year, even though they do have Russ and Harden, who I did have on my all NBA teams this year, and they both are all stars. And for you to literally make that trade for Russell Westbrook and then make that trade to get Robert Covington, it was to go all in on this ideal of small ball and playing with wings that can cover, guard, rotate, and shoot the ball. This is their style of play. This is how they want to play, and they moved all their chips in on it. And I think it was smart. This is how your offense is meant to be. But I still want to see, can they rebound at a high level? Can they protect the rim at a high level? Because you do have the Anthony Davises, the Nikola Jokic's, the Joel Embiid's, the guys that can really get these guys in foul trouble and destroy them on the boards if they need to or if that situation does happen. Can they get the steals? Can they get the transition to make up for that if they do fall in that situation when they go against a big? Can they cause enough havoc to make up for the deficiency inside or even rebounding? And that's something that I said before the trade happened and after the trade happened. And now that's how they're going to have to make up those um, rebounds if they can't get them or they can't stop a guy inside. But also, I really want to see what Harden is going to do. Seeing that he lost the weight, seeing that he really feels good about this team, he really wanted Russ to come to this team and him and Russ are devoid of a championship, that's what the priority should be, being able to play your best basketball to give your team the best chance of winning it all. And with a lot of players stopping and a lot of players getting corona or not wanting to play, that helps the Rockets' chances of making a bigger playoff push if things do go out, work their way, and it's, the team does knock down shots and take advantage of the opportunities that they will have. But other than that, this Rockets team is a much-watched team just because we all want to see what they're really made of. We all want to see if they're really a serious contender, and we all really want to see how good can this Russell and James Harden dynamic work just because we've seen the Chris Paul and James Harden work significantly better because they did win over 60 games, and they did take the Golden State Warriors to seven games, and they was up 3-2, which people forget, on the Golden State Warriors when they did have a healthy roster, and they was the only team that I believe took them to six games last year when they had Kevin Durant. Even though they lost that, even though they lost Kevin Durant later that series, they still was able to beat them with him, and I think that that's something interesting, too, to watch as this team go on. Mike D'Antoni has always been a genius offensively. He has always found ways to be a, a, a genius to really destroy defenses, and I don't really see no difference in this team, and that's why I like the fact that they did go in on their style of play. But also, I still do have questions to this team, and I do have things that I definitely want to see as this team goes back to playing on the court. So to me, this is probably the most interesting team in the West. They have enough talent. They know who they are. They know how to play together. They know their roles, and guys don't try to do anything above that. And they have a coach that has become one of the most polarizing and influential coaches in the entire NBA history in general, in my personal opinion. And now they have a, a ample opportunity to really have a chance to win it all. Now we got to see can they get it done and will they get it done. I think that's going to be the biggest question out of all of it. But other than that, James Harden, his time is ticking. He's getting older. He's still dominant, still one of the best players. I don't see him slowing down no time soon. Yeah, only time I can see him doing it if he gets an injury, a significant one. But other than that, he's going to be one of the better players in the league for a couple more years, it looks like. But can he be a championship player? We haven't seen that because he hasn't got to the final since he was in OKC. And when he was in OKC, he wasn't the best player on the team at that time. Well, he is now, but he hasn't been able to get to the finals once. He got to the Western Conference Finals a couple of times, but never got to the NBA Finals. And that's the biggest knock on his career. And it's also the biggest knock on Russ's career, because when Russell Westbrook was the best player on OKC, they never made it out of the first round, which isn't a good thing, but it is something that can change. And I want to see if that's going to happen. Also, one thing we do know also about this team is that they're, res they're resilient. They're going to play into that buzzer sound. They're going to really, you know, be stubborn and prideful in their approach of the game. And they most likely won't change their philosophy going into this season. I mean, going into the playoffs. So be on the lookout for that. We've seen them live and die by the three. And it seems like they're still going to have that mentality. 
it could be a thing that wins them a title if they fall, but it also can be another detriment of why they may lose as they will, you know, continue to shoot them regardless if they go in or not. And that is just how they are and that's their identity. That's how they play. But it also has a huge downside too. And that was one of the biggest reasons of why they never got to the Western Conference. I mean, to the NBA Finals. But other than that, uh, I'm interested in this team. I can't wait to see them play. I can't wait to see how they're going to play against the, the, the bigger bigs and the teams that have um, more patience and not trying to rush and do everything and, and really try to pick apart this defense. The playoffs is all about adjustments. The playoffs is all about matchups. And there's some matchups that they have favors in and some matchups we, it's a toss-up. And there's some matchups that I can see other teams tearing them apart. And that's when Mike D'Antoni coaching comes into play. Will he make the adjustments? Will he make the changes? And who can he really trust in big playoffs moments besides Russell Harden and Tucker? Other than that, we have to find out by watching. And that's what makes it fun because we don't know. And that's what makes it interesting also. But other than that, um, check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Also, like the video if you liked it already. Thanks for the love and support. And if you haven't, like and share. It does help this channel grow. And at the same time, one thing else I would say is check out my Facebook page and also play on that account that be in the description and comment section below. I make videos just like this every single day. So if you like discussion, this is the channel for you. But I do also offer breakdowns of rookies, summer league, NBA players, and NBA legends. I also do cover the draft. I also do cover, like I said, summer league, season previews, trade deadline, free agency, and even playoff predictions. So if you love basketball and you can't get enough of it, this is the channel for you because I come to you with a new video each and every day. And I love to do what I do. And you guys love watching it and following. And that's what made me go every day. But other than that, this is a great pickup. I think he's a little better than Cephalosha. Bigger can do a little bit more defensively. But at the same time, I don't really see him playing big in major minutes because they do have other guards and wings that are better offensively and fit their system just a little bit better because of that. But he is a good injury replacement guy. He is a guy that already knows the system, and he is a guy that already knows how to play, and that works. He can be a great defender, and that's something that Cephalosha can do. But I think Dubai Mute is just a little better. So I actually think they didn't downgrade in Tyler. I think they actually made a small upgrade losing Cephalosha and replacing him with Bada Mute. But that's just my analysis on it. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Win Wade basketball analysis. I'm gone.